Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zenata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colts, and in this video, we're going to be walking through how to create custom views and filters using the role or group of the specific owner of those records. So before we do jump in, I want to ask, uh, please do consider liking and subscribing down below if you find this video useful. And please be sure to leave any comments, questions, or feedback down in the comment section below as we try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly show, Azaz. So without any further ado, let us jump on in. Here I have uh, the CRM up in front of me here, and I've got uh, you know a handful of contacts in a list. And we've got two different users. So I'm going to go ahead and say that three of these contacts are owned by my sales user. And where we're really going to dive in on this walkthrough is in showing how I can now create views and filters that essentially look at the roles or groups of these users. Um, but before we do that, I thought it'd be good to just do a quick 30,000 foot view of roles and groups and how they work inside of CRM. Um, so I'm jumping over here into our settings and all of this is gonna be managed under the users and control. And so here, if I jump into users, we'll see in our demo account, we just have these two and I've named them admin user and sales user where our sales user is in the sales representative role and the admin user is in this CEO role. When we're talking about roles, what we really mean is under security control, and roles here, we can create different types of, um, you know, positions or roles inside the CRM that define access to various records. So it kind of gives us a hierarchy where a general manager would be able to see all the records owned by a sales representative, as well as a customer service team member. But these two groups might not be able to see each other's records. In, you know, larger CRM installs, you could imagine that, you know, you could have 10, 15, 20 people in this sales representative role, and you could also have, you know, 15, 20 people in customer service. So if you were looking to create a list of all the contacts owned by sales representatives, you'd have to add in 15 or 20 names into that list. So getting them set up here is going to help you down the line in a big way. We'll quickly touch on groups as well. So groups are kind of a more free form way to create different permission sets inside of CRM. So if you need some type of group that goes across hierarchy, you know, maybe you have a manager's group, right? And there's one or two managers from each of these different teams and you can create them kind of across that role hierarchy. Really the big one, I mean, roles, roles are the ones that everyone use. Uh, some people need groups, not everyone needs those, but now we can kind of jump into the actual walkthrough here uh, now that we've done that quick overview. Again, you're over on the contact side. I've got just six you know, demo contacts. Three are assigned to the admin user who's in the CEO role and three are assigned to the sales user who is in that sales representative role. And I'll show you what I mean here when we talk about creating custom views. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new custom view. Let's call this sales contacts. Right. A lot of people have these broken down right into contacts that we're trying to sell contacts that we're only marketing to. Right. Maybe they're not validated enough to start placing calls, contacts that are already customers and no not longer need to talk to sales. And if we wanted to create that view based on owner before this new update, we didn't have these belong to role and not belong to role options. So we would just have to go in and add users, right? One by one, as you could imagine, salespeople come, salespeople go, people change jobs, they get promoted, all these different types of things happen. And this essentially creates long-term maintenance that you used to have to do where you have to remove a user, add a user, remove a user, remove five users, add five users more, um, and continually manage this filter. What we've done now is we've added the ability to say the contact owner belongs to a role. And this is a you know minor thing on the front end, major thing in terms of how easy this is to manage in the long term. Because now I can just say that I'm looking for a list where the contact owner belongs to a certain role. And within that role, I'll go ahead and add our owner here to our fields. I only want to see the contacts owned by that particular user within that particular role. So now if we add new users to the system, and we need to associate them with a role, 
they will just automatically contribute to the relevant lists that are a part of this. Huge time saver down the line, right? This kind of eliminates the need to continually be updating custom views as different team members are coming and going in the organization. Um, now there is one other little thing I wanna show here. Um, so we've got our custom views and these are like our lists here that we can create and save up in the top left. We also have what are called quick filters. And quick filters oftentimes get little bells and whistles that aren't available in the custom views. So I wanna show one of those here that's new with this update. Inside of the contact owner filter in the quick views, we can actually use group participation as a value for filtering. Now, don't hold me to it. I would imagine that this is going to come to the custom views as well. Um, but for right now, this is only available here. Uh, if I say that they need to belong to that sales group, of course, uh, this guy's already a part of that, right? So it's gonna keep all those records. But if we go through on any other view, we can use these as a role or a group just as a quick filter on the left-hand side. Um, so kind of nice to have, right? These are updates that are just gonna save you a lot of time in the long run because you're no longer gonna need to manually be updating these views every single time we have any type of staffing change. More of a quick hit video today. We just wanted to get this out to kind of give a walkthrough of this new feature update. We've got a handful of clients internally who've been you know, waiting for this one <laughs> with bated breath. So you want to get a video out, make sure that everybody knows that this feature is now available. If you have any views that are currently using specific users, I would highly recommend that you bump over to this new method. Better to do it now before someone leaves and things start breaking later. So again, uh, from Zanata Consulting, I'm Tyler Colt, and I really do hope that you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really helps us out. And again, leave those questions, feedback, new video requests, anything you like down there in the comments section as we do try to read and respond to each and every one on our weekly show, Azaz. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.